Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on complicated truth tables. Essentially, what we'll be seeing here today is why we never ever want to use truth tables again to deduce logical truth. And the reason is because it is a pain in the butt. And to show you why, let's take a look at this compound expression. We have P and Q, or not, if R, then P or S, with the parentheses as the order of operations, as you see on your screen. So you might see already why this is going to be a pain in the butt. We have a whole bunch of logical connectives, but worse than that, we have a whole bunch of different simple sentences. We have four simple sentences here, P, Q, R, and S, and that's going to make life difficult for us. Now, I've gone ahead and at least created the columns for the truth table that you see here. Notice that this is way bigger than anything we've encountered before. Before, I think we've looked at at most four rows because we only had two simple sentences. But as you increase the number of simple sentences in a truth table, you increase the size of the truth table exponentially. So we have four simple sentences. There are two to the fourth power number of rows here. So we have 16 rows here. And to show you how annoying these things are to fill out, I'm going to do it live. This is the first time I've ever done this. I actually haven't done this before filming, so we're going to hope it all works out very well. Now, the first thing that you do in a truth table, as always, is to create every single combination of truth values for the simple sentences. So the way you do that is you start off with the first simple sentence and you go halfway down with trues. So there's going to be eight trues here. That's six, seven, and eight. And then you go false with the rest. So we have eight truths, oops, eight truths and eight false. And then you go to the next column over and you are going to go halfway down the truths with truths, that's hard to say, and then halfway down with false. And then for the next half, for the falses, you go halfway down with trues and halfway down with falses. For the next column over, you're gonna repeat this process. So for the top part of true values for Q, you go with true for R. And then on the second half, you go false and then you go back to being true, and then you go back to being false, and then you go back to being true, and then you go back to being false, and then well, a couple more times here, true, true, false, false, and then for the last one, you just alternate. So it's gonna be oh, true, false, true, false, true, oh, no, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. That is brutal just filling out that. Imagine if we had a fifth simple sentence. Instead of having 16 rows, we'd have 32. If we had a sixth simple sentence, we would be up to 64 rows. And you're pretty soon running out of paper. In fact, I'm actually surprised that I could fit four simple sentences on a single slide. So that's, again, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why this process sucks. All right, so now let's go into the logical connectives. We have P and Q. So we're looking at the first two columns and seeing when they're both true. Now, because we have this setup here where in the top half P is true and in the top top half, we have Q being true as well. This is going to be true for the first four and false all the way down. Fill that in, there we go. Okay, now we have for this, what is this? This is the sixth column, P or S. So we're looking where just P or just S or both of them are true. Not as easy of a shortcut as last time, so we're gonna have to go through this one by one. So at least with the top half of these, this is always true because P is true. So there we go, we got that. Now for the bottom half, it's only true when S is true. All of the other ones here are false for P, so that means we're going, we're actually alternating here. We're going true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. And that's because that's just connecting over to these right here for the S column. Okay, now we go to if R, then P or S. So this is false whenever R is true, but P or S is false. Another way of doing this is doing the reverse, which is to look when R is true and P or S is true, and also mark this down as being true when R is false. So let's actually start with when R is false. So we're looking at the third column here, and we're looking for when the antecedent is false, so we can mark this as being vacuously true. So it's true here, true here, true here, true here, true here, true here. Again, I'm just converting false values to being true from the third column over to this column. True, true. Okay, now we have to go through the rest of the half of these. So we're looking for when both R and the compound expression P or S is true. So R is true here and P 
or s is true. Same thing here. What about here? So here we have r is being true and p or s is being true. So this is also still good. What about down here? We have r as true and p or s as being true. Here we have r as being true and p or s as being false. So that's our first false. Here we have r is true and p or s is true. That's true. And here we have r as being true and p or s as being false. So we had a whole bunch of truth values and a, not very many false values at all there. All right, next one, we are now looking at the negation of the previous column. So this is gonna be very easy. We're just going to take the true values and flip them to falses and take the false values and flip them to true. There we go. Gotta make sure we get the couple of trues in there and we're done there. And now we're at the last column. So now we're looking at the conjunction or rather the disjunction of P and Q as well as the previous column, the negation of if R then P or S. So we're looking at, let's see, we're looking at this column here and we're looking at this column here and we're seeing where at least one of those is true. So looking at the top four rows, we have true for those four because P and Q is true for those four. For the rest of the rows, it is false. So the only way for this to be true is if the negation from the previous column is true as well. And that's actually only going to, only going to be the case in two cases for the remainder. And so there you have it. That is a completed truth table. I hope I did it right, because otherwise I'm gonna have to redo this. And as you can see, this took an awful lot of time. I'm well, into like almost seven minutes into this lecture, and most of that time was spent filling this thing out. It is brutal and it is annoying. And what's worse is that when you have so many of these like this, when you're doing this by hand, you can easily make a mistake, in which case everything else is wrong and you have to go back and start over. And that is brutal and it sucks. So what if we conclude here? Well, this took forever for us to do. And while you might, as a computer programmer, if you're taking this class because you're interested in computer programming, you might think to yourself, yeah, you know what? It did take us a little bit of time, but a computer would take less time to do this. And it would also be very accurate. So that takes care of a couple of the problems in that it's not as much man manpower, it's not as much labor, and it's much more accurate than if we did it. So you might think, well, this is just fine if a computer does it. And while that's correct, it would be faster for a computer to do it, and it would be more correct or be more accurate if a computer were to do it. This is still going to lead to inefficient programming because it's taking all that time. A computer would take all that time to calculate each and every single piece of this. And each and every single calculation takes time. So when you go from, say, four variables or four simple sentences up to six or eight or 12, suddenly this is growing exponentially, which means a computer is going to be taking exponentially more time to calculate this, which again, takes time, even if you're a computer. So if you want a faster program, you need to actually learn how to do this more efficiently. And you should want faster programs because faster programs are better programs, all other things being equal. So that means we want to dispense with using truth tables to find logical truthfulness and logical validity. And so instead, we're going to learn how to do proofs. And this is going to be a three-step process, and this will take care of most of the remainder of the course. In the first unit after this, we're going to be looking at replacement rules. These are ways of taking logical expressions that we have and rewriting them in a way that maintains the logical validity and the logical truthfulness of those original sentence structures. The second unit after this, we'll look at rules of inference. This allows us to take two constructions, two sentences, whether they be simple or compound, and be able to conclude a third thing that's logically valid based off of those first two things. And then from there, we can go into more complicated proofs, which actually allows us to, uh, to rather, it allows us to conclude many different things based off of many different assumptions. And that's ultimately where we want to go with the course. So I hope you like proofs. We're going to have a whole lot of them coming up. Hope you enjoyed this unit and I'll see you next time when we learn about replacement rules and have yet more practice with truth tables in the process. Join me then.